In this video, we shall look at a few interesting problems on static and kinetic frictions, the type of problems that we did not have chance to look at before. As before, we shall start with free body diagrams in these problems, followed by Newton's second law by associating the concept of static and kinetic frictions inside the Newton's second law. So let's get started. So in this problem, there are three bodies, A, B, and C. Now blocks A and B are connected to C as shown. There are two pulleys, one and two. A and B each weighs 25 newtons. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the blocks and the surface is 0 0.35. So there is friction here and also friction there. Now C descends with a constant velocity, which means the acceleration of the system is zero. You want to calculate the tension in the rope connecting A and B. So that means that rope right there. And also the weight of block C. So let's do the free body diagram. Let's start with object A. So object A is resting on the horizontal floor. So let's label all the forces acting directly on A. There is this weight that we know to be 25 newtons. And then obviously there is this normal force, which in this case must be the same as 25 newtons. And then there is this tension that we want to find. That is the tension T in the rope connecting A and B. And then there is this kinetic friction between the surface and block A. Let's label it as F, K, A. And finally, since the entire system is moving with a constant velocity, we know the acceleration is zero. So zero meter per second squared. So of course, A is moving with a constant velocity to the right because C is descending downward. So A is moving to the right. Now, because the acceleration is zero, the net force on object A is zero. So that means this tension must be the same as the kinetic friction. So tension equals the kinetic friction and object A, which is mu K, the coefficient of kinetic friction, which we know is 0 0.35, and the normal force acting on object A. I'm going to label the normal force acting on object A as N subscript A, so N subscript A. And now we can calculate the tension. So mu k is 0 0.35. Normal force is 25 newtons. And that's going to give you 8.75 newtons. So that's the answer for part A. Now before we calculate the weight of block C, which is, well, actually part B, we need to sketch the free body diagram for object B. So the object B is resting on that inclined plane. Now the forces acting on this object B is of course the tension that is pulling upward. Now this is a different tension, that is the tension on the upward string or the rope. And the tension that we have already found, capital T, there is this weight which we know to be 25 newtons of object B. There is normal force from the inclined plane. It's acting perpendicular to the plane. I'm going to label this as N sub B. And of course, there is this um, kinetic friction, F K B. And the object B is moving up the plane with some constant velocity, so the acceleration is zero. Of course, we can also label the component of that weight perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane, like that in red. What are these components? Well, from previous video, we have explained how to get these components. It is this weight the perpendicular component is the weight times the cosine of the inclination angle. So in this case, it's 40 degrees. The parallel component is the weight 
times the sine of the inclination angle. Now let's write down F equals to MA. Now since the net force is again zero because of zero acceleration, the upward force must be balanced by the downward force. Now what are the upward forces? There's only one, the tension T1 that we don't know. The downward force, there are three, tension, kinetic friction, and also the component of weight parallel to the plane. So writing them, or equating them, T1 equals T plus F K B, the kinetic friction on object B, plus component of weight parallel to the plane. Now we know what this tension is. The tension is given in part A8.75 newtons, so that we know. The kinetic friction can be calculated because we have all the information that we need. It is given by mu k times the normal force on object B. So now mu k is 0 0.35 and normal force, this force here, is given by the component of weight perpendicular to the plane, so namely that. So 0.35 times 25 cosine 40 and that will be 6.7 newtons. So that is known. And finally the component of weight the parallel to the plane it's 25 sine 40 which is 16.1 newtons. So T1 is the sum of this number, that number, and that number. And you will get 31.6 newtons for T1. And now we can easily find the weight of block C. Now if you can see, block C here is hanging vertically, so the weight of block C is what you want to find, and the tension is T1 upward, and it's not moving, the acceleration is zero, so that means the weight C must be tension T1 in this string. So since we have found T1, 31.6 newtons, that is also the weight of block C. So the answer to part B is 31.6 newtons. Problem 2. Now weight A weighs 75 newtons, so that's this weight. The coefficient of static friction between the block and the surface is 0.31, so that is this surface right here. So the entire system is in equilibrium, meaning there is no acceleration. So little w here is 20 newtons, that's the weight of that little w, the hanging weight. Calculate first the friction exerted on block A. So what is the friction on A from this surface? So first let's do the free body diagram for object A. So that is object A. The forces would be the weight is 75 newtons. And then you have this normal force perpendicular to the surface, which in this case will also be 75 newtons. And then you have, of course, the kinetic static friction heading leftward because the potential motion is a rightward although the entire system is at rest but this tension right here the tension in this row will tend to move will try to move this object a to the right so the static friction must oppose that potential motion that means it acts to the left and let's not forget the tension and the rope now the acceleration is zero because the system is in equilibrium, so let's apply the net force equals to zero here. So since the net force is zero, no acceleration, that means tension is the same as the static friction. Now we don't know the tension, so we cannot say anything about the static friction. Let's just box that equation for now. Now let's construct a free body diagram for this weight. So basically what we have is the little weight which is 20 newtons and this tension in this string we can call that t2 so let's call it t2 the acceleration is zero so that means immediately we know t2 is 20 newtons 
So all the information that we have found is jotted down there. Now finally, let's see what's happening here at this knot. So we have to write down an equation here at the knot. So it is a free body diagram equation. So this is T2. This is the knot right here. And then you have this T going that way. And there is a tension, let's call it T1. So that is the tension in this upper string. And we know this angle here, this is alpha, and alpha is 45 degrees. So 45 degrees, that's this alpha here. So let's try to balance the equation along the x-axis and along the y-axis. So let's do the x-axis, there is no acceleration. So acceleration is again zero. So along the x-axis, the capital T must be balanced by the x component of this tension. The x component of that is T1 cosine alpha. Alpha is 45 degrees. And that's it. Now let's do the y component. The y component is T2 and that will be balanced by T1 sine 45 degrees. Now since we know what T2 is from here, so we know what T2 is, we know the sine 45, and you can calculate your T1, which is 28.3 newtons. Now having found this T1, you can substitute the T1 in here to get your T, and you will end up concluding your T is 20 newtons. And from this equation, since T is the same as the static friction, so we can conclude the static friction is also 20 newtons. And that is the answer for part A. Now for part B, find the maximum weight for which the system will remain at equilibrium. Alpha is 45 degrees. Now maximum weight W can be supported by maximum static friction. Maximum static friction is the coefficient of static friction times the normal force, which is 23.25 newtons. Substituting this inside here, you can find T1, 32.9 newtons, and using T1 and putting it in here will give you the maximum weight because maximum weight is simply the same as T2. And that will give you the maximum weight and it is 23.25 newtons. So that's the answer for part B. So in this problem you have two masses connected by a rod and they're sliding down. We want to determine the common acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the rod. And both these rods are subjected to friction. So what do you see here is a free body diagram for object A. You have the normal force, you have the weight, you have the kinetic friction, and the acceleration is shown to be downward. There's a tension in the rod and the two components of the weight. Supplying so F equals to MA, tension plus the component of the weight parallel to the plane, subtract the kinetic friction equals to MA. So this is the component of weight parallel to the plane. This is the coefficient of kinetic friction on object A, and this is the normal force of the component of weight perpendicular to the plane. So this is a free body diagram for object B. You have the normal force, you have the tension backward, kinetic friction backward, and the weight with its two components, perpendicular to the plane component of the weight and parallel to the plane component of the weight for object B. So this is the F equals to MA equation for object B. The component of weight parallel to the plane subtract the two forces up the plane equals the MA term. 4g sine theta is a component of weight parallel to the plane. The kinetic friction is given by this term. This is the coefficient of kinetic friction and this is the normal force. Minus tension equals ma. So as you can see there are two equations or two unknowns. The unknowns are tension and acceleration. Acceleration and tension. g is 9.81. Everything else is known. So when you solve these equations simultaneously you will get the following answer for acceleration, 3.52 meter per second squared, and tension is 0.8 newtons. And that solves the problem.